So this topic looks at elemental analysis, and it says uh, measurements show that unknown compound X has the following composition. Write the empirical formula of X. So this is how we actually get the data that we were using to determine empir empirical formula, those percent by mass values in our practice problems that we looked at in lecture. So um, again, that process is elemental analysis, and here is the data that we have. Now, we know that this unknown compound, through elemental analysis, we know that this unknown compound is 69.9% uh, by mass iron and 30% by mass oxygen. And so we are asked to determine the empirical formula uh, of this unknown compound X, and we can do that from this bit of information. The first thing we need to do is if we have percent by masses, we need to convert those percent by mass values to uh, gram amounts. Now, there's an easy way to do that. The easy way to do that is by assuming that we have 100 grams of sample. Now, we can assume whatever we want. We can assume 500 grams. We can assume 52 grams, 1,000 grams. But it's very easy to assume 100 grams simply because of what a percentage is. Percentage is parts per 100. So if we assume 100 grams, and if we have 69.9%, then that would, uh, that would translate to 69.9 grams if we had 100 grams of sample. The same for oxygen. If we assume that we have 100 grams of sample, and if that sample is 30% by mass oxygen, well, because we assumed 100 grams, then we could say we have 30 grams of oxygen. And so by assuming 100 grams, we can get gram amounts. So if we, for iron, start with 69.9%, we assume 100 grams, this becomes 69.9 grams. And the same for oxygen. We start with 30, 0%. By assuming 100 grams, that translates to 30 grams. Now, after we have gram amounts, we need to convert to moles using molar mass as a conversion factor. So iron has a molar mass of 55.845 grams of iron, and this is grams of iron, and this would be grams of oxygen, and one mole of Fe. So if I do that math, grams cancels with 69.9 divided by 55.845 that is 1.2517 moles of Fe. I try to not round too much. Um, you definitely don't want to round to less than three significant digits, but I just took it out to four decimal places, which will be fine. Treat it as an intermediate value there. Now, for oxygen, we need to do the same thing. Notice, even though oxygen is diatomic, I'm not going to use the molar mass of molecular hydrogen, but of just... I mean of molecular oxygen, but of just an atom of oxygen. Why is that? Well, we're talking about oxygen in a compound. So this compound has iron and oxygen in it. So it's not pure oxygen. Therefore, we don't need to write this as O2. Okay. So how many moles of oxygen do we have in this 100 grams of sample? 1.87 five moles of oxygen. So assuming we have 100 grams of sample, that would be 69.9 grams of iron and 30 grams of oxygen, this many moles of iron, this many moles of oxygen. Once we have mole amounts, then we can uh, determine the mole ratios by dividing by smallest mole amount. So if we look here, which one of these is the smallest mole amount? That would be this one. 1.25 is less than 
seven five. So if I divide both of these values by the smallest mole amount, what it does is it sets this one to one. And every other uh, element present is gonna be present in some amount either equal to or greater than this amount. So we set this to one because this is the element present in the smallest amount. I set it to one because it is the least mole amount and dividing 1.875 divided by 1.2517, I get 1.498. So just to review what I did there, I found the smallest mole amount and divided everything by that smallest mole amount. And so the mole ratio that I get for in this case, if I divide it by itself, I get one because this was the element present in the smallest mole amount. That means the mole ratios for all of the other elements are gonna be equal to or greater than irons. So irons will set to one. This will either be one or something greater than one. That's why we divided this by itself. Now, these mole ratios are always gonna be very, very, very close to a number. It's not always gonna be a whole number. Uh, in this case, it's very close to 1.5. And so I would take this, round it to 1.5, and then I'm gonna say, wait, I have, my, I have my empirical formula. My empirical formula is Fe1, O, 1.5, meaning that I have 1.5 times more oxygen than I do iron. That's what these mole ratios tell us. For every one mole of iron, I have 1.5 moles of oxygen. But there's a problem. This is a chemical formula. I cannot have uh, uh, decimals as subscripts. I have one atom of iron for every 1.5 atoms of oxygen. So to get rid of these decimals and, and replace them with whole number subscripts, I have to multiply these values, this 1 and this 5, 1.5, by a multiplier. In order to determine what that multiplier is, I just need to ask myself, what do I need to multiply 1.5 by to get, the, to, to get the next nearest whole number? Well, if I multiply this by 1, I have 1.5. What if I multiply it by 2? 1.5 times 2 is 3. So because I multiplied this times 2, I also have to multiply this times 2. So these are my correct mole ratios. So my empirical formula would be Fe2O3. And so sometimes you will have uh, ish, uh, situations where you have a, a decimal instead of a whole number. Uh, as you find your mole ratios and then your empirical formula. So after you find your mole ratios, you can do the empirical formula. In that case, when you have decimals, like if it was 0.5, which is what we just uh, encountered, multiply it by 2, you'll get a whole number. If it's something 0.25, multiply it by 4. If it's 0.6, multiply it by 5. If it's 0.8, multiply it by 5. If it's 0.33, multiply it by 3. Uh, if it's 0.2, multiply that by 5. Now, so this should cover uh, the vast majority of the ones you may encounter. Just multiply it by these multipliers, and you'll have to multiply all of the mole ratios by this multiplier as well. And then you'll have your empirical formula. So... If you start with percent by mass, assume 100 grams to get to grams. Use molar mass to convert to moles. Find the smallest mole amount and divide all of the mole amounts by that smallest molar amount to get your mole ratios. If your mole ratio happens to be a decimal, then multiply all of the mole ratios by the necessary multiplier, and then you'll have your empirical formula. I will note that sometimes you may not start with percent by masses. You will have a gram amount. So as long as you know the total uh, mass of the compound, then that's fine. Uh, but in these Alex topic problems, we will always begin with mass percentages.